All right, it's morning huddle time. Good I morning. You, no, I'm not saying it works. I wish you God speed. I, I God speed with all of that. I think that's really, really nice. Um, I, you know, I'm not sure what kind of success you're going to have with that today because the world, my friend, has changed. Right. Latin what? American construction workers, they have different needs. They have completely different These needs. These awards have a huge... Um, like criteria that you have to fill out, and they usually have a community service or community relations portion. Of, uh, you know, the most productive uh, with a high performance value, um, and you know, sometimes it's eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. Funny, isn't? Uh, yeah, I, not not for me. Not for uh, me. At eleven o'clock, I am guaranteed to be snoring. So <laughs> so. Um... Good morning. It's morning huddle time uh, here with Stacy Holzinger. I'm Chad Prinky uh, with our guest, Mike Wisniewski. How's everybody this morning? Very good. Doing good. Very eyed, bushy tailed. Yeah. Sweet. Even got a little time zone behind, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, eight o'clock here. Eight a.m. That's, that's that's too early. Now we used to do we used to do the huddle at eight. Stacy, you remember that? Yeah, but then we had some people, luckily, that joined us on the West Coast, and they said, we want to come on live, but, you know, too early for us. It's still early for them. Um, it is still early for the West Coasters, but I do, I, you know, more people are uh, toughing it out on the West Coast, joining us live, which is cool. Um, so, uh, so Mike Wisniewski is joining us for Materials Exchange. Uh, it is an online marketplace for raw materials. He's going to tell us a lot more about that. Mike, tell, tell us just a little bit um, you know, about where you are in the world and, and, your, and your business. Just give us a, a, a I guess, you know, 30 second overview. Uh, well, I'm in downtown Chicago. And yeah, I actually have a picture. I'm going to overlay this yeah. while you talk. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, what we've created here is a, a digital marketplace that has the look and feel and functionality of a financial marketplace or a financial exchange. Um, the important factor there is it allows for price discovery. And as everyone knows, I would assume uh, lumber and material prices can be very volatile. And, you know, the idea of volatility prior to what we experienced for the last two years was substantial. And then the last two years have obviously, you know, blown the lid off this and shown what's really possible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really important, in my opinion, to have a, a medium or a platform where the you know people, the users, the people in the market can get together and figure out what's going on. What's what are the prices today? Man, like, and, 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 you know, it's always been this way to some extent, which you've alluded to. Price has always changed a little bit day to day, uh, but but a little bit, uh, you know, uh, is nothing compared to what we've been experiencing uh, with price yeah. fluctuations day to day over the past couple of years, in particular, probably the past. Uh, well, I guess it depends on the market that you're in, but uh, yeah, comb- throw inflation on top of COVID, and we got a whole <laughs> got a whole storm, right? Uh, with price wise, and so in that picture uh, we were seeing that this is the view from your office, right? This is uh, that is the that's, view that's from Lake Michigan, huh? We're we're looking east. We're in the Chicago Board of Trade building, um, the iconic uh, birth pay- birthplace of the futures markets. Awesome. Um, so this is looking east, and uh, I think the fun part of this picture is if you look on the right side, that beige building that uh, has all the skinny little windows. Yeah. Um, most people don't realize that's a federal prison, and it's in downtown Chicago. I mean, we are the Sears Tower is just behind us. Um, so yeah, this is the beautiful view I get every morning. I look out awesome. at the lake, and then I glance over, and uh, I remember to always walk the righteous path. So. Yeah, no doubt. You got a constant sort of reminder that you know, do the right thing. Do, just, okay. just do the right thing. Exactly. That's great. That's awesome. All right. Well, good. So um, we've got a lot to talk about. I, I want to uh, dig into sort of why you're doing what you're doing, and and you know how that whole experience has gone. Stacy, I'm guessing there's going to be a fair amount of conversation, uh, you know, on the on the chat. Uh, please keep that fired up, and uh, I will um, uh, bring you back. Uh, here with uh, five, 10 minutes left, something along those lines, and we'll hear from the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so, Mike, paint a picture of uh, just, you know, you, you start talking about, well, you know, creating this digital marketplace. 
a place to connect buyers and sellers, a place where uh, people can be more informed. Uh, paint a picture a little bit of, I don't know, 10 years from now or 15 years. I don't know how long it is in the future. But the future of the materials procurement for our audience, which is mostly construction companies, what does materials procurement look like in, in your uh, picture of the future? Um, it is going to be much more scientific, a lot less art form. Um, when you just consider <clears throat> all of the technology that is coming into our industry, which okay. is badly needed. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of uh, statistics out there that show construction is the production of, how do they say, the um, construction output is down sure. compared to 100 years ago. It's taking us longer to do stuff while every other industry has, you know, utilized innovation and has, uh, they get more done with less. Um, so anyway, the technology coming into the market is, or to this industry is nothing short of remarkable. Um, but to operate properly, it needs data and it needs good data and clean data and easy to access data. And most important, it needs it digitally. So, um, that's the science behind the, the game. If you would, um, it, it's about connectivity and you know, collaboration. It, let's just say if you went over to <clears throat> the big three car makers, you know, I guarantee you that they are integrated into their suppliers and their supply chain is fully visible and they know what's going on. Yep. Now you look at our supply chain and you have zero visibility into your suppliers, um, inventories, pricing. You know, it's, it's really crazy. There's very little collaboration. So, so it, yeah, I remember, I remember, uh, a couple of different, there were a couple of different moments in my, in my life that I, I, I stored along these lines. I remember an interview I was listening to, I think it was 2007 on the radio and I was driving up the road and somebody was talking about the very first, and I don't think they were calling it a smartphone. I think they were calling it a camera phone at that time. Uh, and <laughs> right. And, and, and I, I remember, and I was, I was driving up the road and they were talking about this camera phone and, and, uh, the, the person said, you know, what do you, paint the picture of the future of, of cell phones. What's the future of cell phones going to look like? And the person who was being interviewed said, you know, I think we're talking about more than the future of cell phones. I think we're talking about the future of cameras. I think we're talking about the future of, of video. I think we're talking about the future of maybe even computers. And, and, and they're like laughing and they're talking about like how crazy that would be and how this powerful thing in your pocket may very well turn out to be like, your go-to device for most life items, you know, and they were like, imagine, you know, talking to, 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 you know, friends on video on your phone, imagine uh, right. banking on your phone and things along those lines. And I remember that interview back in 2007 or so, it just like burned into my brain as, you know, as you know, time went on, I went, damn, you know, that was, that was really spot on. And then I remember one other conversation with, I was talking to a buddy of mine who, it, it was so funny. Right out of college, he went and he became like a store manager at Blockbuster. And I was like, I said to him, I was like, that doesn't seem like a long term gig. And he no. was so upset with me. It was like it was 2005 or 2006, something like that. And he was like, I don't know, man. He goes, I think people are always going to walk in. They're going to want to always shop around and get advice from somebody. And, you know, obviously the market has changed. So when sure. I start thinking about the future of, of materials procurement in construction, right? And I start, you know, painting this picture. Are we going to point and click for everything? Is that yeah. is that what we're going to do? No, actually, the answer is no. We're not. Okay. So what's it, how's it going to work? The system is going to do it for us. Oh, weird. Okay. Now you're freaking me out. Talk about it. Okay. So here's the: if you don't know the term BIM, building information yeah. modeling, that is going to change everything. So, um, so we really embrace BIM. Everything gets built in this model, and then the model automatically talks to the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like okay, that. you're you're in a meeting uh, with all ever, all the trades around building this building, and in the center, or you know, everyone's looking at the same screen, and they're looking at a the blueprint, if you would, which is a BIM. Yep. And they go, okay, here's what's going to happen. We are going to move this wall from here over here and we're going to add a bathroom. Yep. And everyone in today goes, Oh no, now I got to reorder. Right. 
the system will be connected up to your management system and your um, your planning and all of that. And it will go, oh, click, order those new things. Cool. And I it'll like reschedule that. it. It Everything will be done um, by by the system, by the art. It's really, it's artificial intelligence is what it turns out to be. And will will I be will I be plugged into like my preferred supplier, or will there be j- just one Amazon? Uh, will it automatically shop for me? What do you envision there? Yeah, absolutely. It'll you'll look into your suppliers and you'll see in their inventories and um, you know when their next available truck is. Cool. Might- so so maybe I can plug in my preferences. What's more important, delivery time? Uh, sure. price actually right. you, you won't have to the system will do all of this all right so uh because the system's so much smarter and as you slide the wall around everything's going to be changing you know okay now you need more two by fours nope now you need less two by fours now you need more two by six so like the system can think so much faster obviously than any human any group yeah. of humans can yeah there's going to need to be uh, obviously oversight on that, but you know, if this this goes to one of the things that I've I've told my children already, which is like, you know, if there's one thing to go to school for, folks, it's robotics and AI. Like, just just you know, just be somebody that can handle that that can work with the future workforce that may be largely uh, robotic or or uh, you know artificial intelligence driven. Uh, well, be and the, that's behind that, the next term, um, CLT or mass timber. Yep. Sure. That is absolutely going to change our industry. Yeah. Well, uh, talk, talk about that from your perspective. Why is that going to change our industry? Um, well, two ways. Uh, first, it uh, consumes an immense amount of forest products. Yeah. Um, as it replaces concrete and steel, um, it's going to, number one, change the way we build. Yeah. It's yeah. going to change who is important from a supply side in the market. Um, you know, your preferred vendor, if they're slinging two by fours today and they decide we're sticking with two by fours instead of going to mass timber, they're probably going to have a hard go of it. Um, it's going to change the, the, the trades in the field and how they build and, you know, their, their roles. Um, there's the, the first mass timber project is actually being built right now in Baltimore. What's the status of that in, in Chicago? Do you have a, a, a sense of what that's like in your world? Yeah, Chicago has a couple buildings. Um, I was just up in Milwaukee, the tallest uh, residential, the tallest mass timber building in the United States. This uh, ascent how many tower stores? in downtown Milwaukee is. How, do you know how tall it is? Uh, Twenty six stories, I believe. Oh my, that's awesome. Um, and these, here's the other thing: is everybody wants to say, "Well, you got it. It's all wood, or it's all concrete and steel." And the reality is, as you mix them and you put the the best possible material in the best role um, for a building that that works out really well. And, you know, mass timber right now at its price point only makes sense uh, above five stories, five or six stories. Uh, But as, as they figure out a cheaper way to produce it and use it, um, it's going to come down. Like the Midwest has a massive issue with bricklayers. Okay. There just aren't enough masons, yeah. and um, you know, you look at many of these uh, the houses in Chicago. They have concrete block walls. Um, they're going to replace those with mass timber, hmm. and these houses are going to go up so much faster. Hmm. So there's like I, I haven't teased the whole thing out, especially from how much uh, fiber, how much lo- wood it actually consumes. Um, so it's it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I see the supply end of that being, uh, you know, a, a critical question. I'm sure that I'm, I'm positive there's a bunch of work being done on that right now. I'm just I'm, I'm not privy. Uh, but, but OK, so so we see this materials procurement world where BIM and the machine surrounding all of that tells us what we need, helps us to see uh, where we should be getting it from and uh, essentially is our decision-making uh, tool, I, you know, make human oversight to double check and make sure all that makes sense. But, uh, but the AI kind of does it for us. We're envisioning that sort of future world. Why are you doing this? What motivated you to, to get involved in, in leading this kind of change? So um, I, I've always been a bit of a problem solver and uh, kind of 
swimming upstream, going a little bit against the current. And the, the term that always has driven me nuts since I was young was, oh, you have to pay your dues or <laughs> this is the way we've always done it. And you just have to learn. Right. And, you know, I, when I first got in the business, I looked and there were these people that were making a bunch of money that weren't really that bright and really weren't studying or working their craft, if you would. And they were making money just because they had the relationship. Right. Sure. And I said, there's just got to be a better way to do this. And um, I became so frustrated with the uh, lumber and building materials industry that I left. And I went into the financial trading world. And at that time, the financial trading world was just embracing this digital uh, idea, you know, of trading online. Um, and my, you know, I, I was actually sitting in Chicago and trading a futures market in Europe the Eurex exchange and we would click the mouse and it would take like one second for the signal to go all the way over to Frankfurt and come back. Sure. And it just blew me away by the way that, Oh my gosh, it happens in a second. Now, you know, we're in milliseconds like that one second time frame wouldn't, wouldn't work. So um, I ended up coming back into the lumber industry and I walked into the lumber futures pit in 2009, which at that time was all open outcry, just, you know, guys standing around, uh, yelling back and forth at each other. <laughs> and, you know, don't, don't let it get lost that I said, guys, because here's how that industry, that business worked. You had to be very aggressive. It helped if you were big, it helped if you were tall and you had a booming voice. And that's, it, it was a great system. Don't get me wrong. Absent of technology, the amount of trading that was being done in the trading pits of Chicago was nothing short of remarkable. Um, but, now you overlay the fact that we have technology, that we can do these transactions more efficiently, more accurately, have more transparency into them, make the markets more fair. So I walk into the lumber pit with a computer. Uh, these All these guys laugh at me and uh, they're like, oh, what's this guy going to do? In the first five minutes, I made $1,000 because there was a digital market alongside the pit market that they were ignoring. Yeah, it was almost like if all the booksellers in the world said, oh, there's that Amazon thing. We're just going to ignore it. It's going to go away. Yeah. And I walked in and I was arbitraging between the booksellers and Amazon. Um, anyway, 18 months later, 95 percent of the volume had gone on to the, the screen, the digital market. And the guys in the pit were standing around doing yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's um, the way it works. What I want to circle back to, though, is. The, the comment about there were guys in the pit. Here's where the opportunity lied then. I was an outsider and I came in and I went from totally outside to being one of the biggest traders in the lumber market, hmm. especially in the options market. Um, my neighbor is a trader. Now, if this neighbor of mine was a trader in uh, 1995, um, that person would have been you know, probably about 30 years old, about six foot four with a booming voice and probably an athletic background. Anyway, she is a about five foot nothing Korean right. girl with a um, master's in physics and getting a PhD in something. So the everything's been turned on its head, right? Yeah. Now that opportunity for her to, you know, apply what she knows um, which is utilizing technology to make a system more efficient. And, and the market now values a different set of trades, right? A oh, different yeah, but, set of characteristics. And yeah. she trades, <clears throat> she trades soybean options. Yep. Like, kind of, you would never expect. It. <laughs> That's awesome. No, um, but the cool thing is it doesn't mean that a six foot four athletic sure. background person could still be trading soybean options. Of if course. they had the, you know. Right. It's you, you got to have the you got to have the ability to add value, uh, you, you know, to, to that space. And so so so, uh, man, there's so many questions I have. What kind of headwinds have you faced trying to trying to get? Is there anybody who doesn't want this oh, to yeah. be successful? I mean, other than your competitors, is there anybody who doesn't want this to be successful? Well, who is our competitor is the question. Right. right? OK, so talk about that. Um, yeah, the wholesale. There's a a big segment of the wholesale community. That has zero interest in this. Now, in this last run up, these wholesalers made so much money. Uh, I mean, obscene. Like, I know people that made well over a million dollars 
yeah. just quickly buying and selling over the phone yeah, or email, whatever, just being in the mix of it, um, taking on very little risk. Uh, they want everything to stay. Nobody wants change. Change is a four letter word, man. You stay away from change, right? Uh, because if you've built something up, just you want to milk it, right? As long as you can. Um, the, the forward thinking people really like it. Um, honestly, the, 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 <laughs> as the market has shifted, as the market was going screaming higher and there was very getting your hands on materials was difficult. Yeah. The people coming to us were those whose current um, vendors were no longer able to support them. So they were looking for something different. Uh, builders, a lot of turnkey framers, um, panel manufacturers, trust manufacturers, the, the ingenuitive, the crafty people out there who are really building the buildings, they were coming to us. The, um, the actual distributors and those people in the supply chain, they, they really weren't so keen on it. Like they were going, you know, I, we see that you're going to disrupt our business. Yep. And the guys in the ends, they had already been disrupted. Like they weren't getting their material. They're like, look, we throw in the towel. We'll look for anything. Um, now what's interesting is the sellers, the supply side are coming back to us and are open to discussing using our platform. Um, Why? Why do you think that is? Because it's not as easy to sell. You know, they... Okay. Those guys walked in uh, every morning and they had, you know, a pile of wood to sell. And by 9 a.m. it was gone. Right. Because their customers are shifting. Well, the well. market was so strong that they didn't need help selling. Sure. Right. There was a, it, there was so much demand. But now, do you see the customer shifting to a more online experience? Do you, do you, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this show is a perfect example of what's shifting. And it is it's about transparency and it's about information. People now, since we have our, our phones and we have this connectivity and this ability to communicate over long stretches instantaneously, they want real-time data. So the information that gets uh, you know talked about on your show, they very easily could rely on their sales rep to come out to the job site or whatever and say, oh, let me tell you about this new thing. Right. Um, but they don't, that messes with their day. This works out so much better for people. Right. This is either live or recorded. People can catch it up on their own time. They can fast forward to the parts that they really want to listen to. Right. Yeah. It's putting the control back into the, the user's hands. Well, and so, I think that's ultimately the way every market has gone, isn't it? Right. Like every, 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 yeah. cons every market uh, will find a way, the consumer will find a way to uh, push progress toward more transparency, more affordability, more quality. The consumer tries to find ways to do that. And I well, think anybody who tries to stand in the way of that, anybody, anybody in, in industry, if you're, you know, again, if you're Blockbuster and you're saying, nope, we're keeping all the stores, everybody loves walking in, you, you, that, that's just ignoring progress. It is, but it's the, the innovators in the industry who bring a product and show it to the consumer. And the consumer says, oh, that's kind of cool. Like what cracks me up, people are like self-driving cars, for instance. Yeah. Oh my God, never. I, I like to hold the wheel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do you know how nice it would be? <laughs> so my family has a vacation house in way northern Wisconsin. It takes six hours to get there. Can you imagine if you say, I'm going to the lake house. How are you getting there? Well, I'm going to plug it in the car, the destination, yep. and I'm going to go get in the car in my pajamas at nine o'clock tonight. Yep. And I'm going to wake up at, you know, six o'clock in the morning at the cabin. Totally. Sign me up for that. Right. Yeah. And, and again, I think for every, uh, you know, one person who says, I like the feel of the steering wheel. And I really like, you know, that's what the, the they're Okay. But that's not, uh, I would say there's probably 20 others that would rather wake up at the cap. I mean, yeah. that's, that, you know, that, that's the deal. So um, it's not that these marketplaces go away altogether either, right? It's just that they, it's, it's just that the consumer shifts. Sure. Look at Uber and uh, taxis. Like, right. Were we as consumers saying, I'm done with this taxis. I want to be able to order it on my phone. 
no, you have no idea. Like it, you were just used to downtown Chicago. You walk out and you wave your arm and a car pulls up. That's pretty easy. Why do you, what else do you need? Well, right. Oh, wait a minute. I can sit at my, the table and order the car and pick which kind of car I want. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'll do that instead. Oh, and then they're going to tell me when they're here. Right. Okay. And I know the price in advance. And, yeah. right? and, if I and I can see my rough arrival time. And, and I can see, right. If I leave something in the car, I know who did it or yeah. I know whose car it was. Like, I, it, it, and what cracks me up, that's such a good example. The taxi industry was in the best possible position to have pulled off that. Oh, my God. Did they had all the drivers? Are you kidding me? It was crazy. So let's, let's flip to the current building material supply chain. Who in this supply chain is better positioned to bring a digital solution and make the lives of their customers more easy? I, I would say the people with all the customers. Right. But you know what? They're not. Right. And they don't want to because they want everybody to be reliant on the archaic systems they have in place. Because if I'm so crappy as a supplier and they're so crappy, I just have to be less crappy than them. And I just get my talons into you. And once we're locked in, you know, you, you, you can't go anywhere else. Man, I, I, any, again, I think you, you can play this out in, in any capital market. You can even play it out in, in, you know, societal change, all those different types of things. Once the world is moving down the progress line, it's, it's, it's a bad idea to try to, uh, you know, ignore it, fight it, disagree with it. It would be much wiser to start to, you know, figure out ways. And, and you know, my God, one of one of, if not the most powerful company in the world, has literally given us the playbook with with Amazon. This That's is it. how we want to buy. Fill in we, <laughs> right? Well, with here's anybody. We we all want to be able to shop easily, quickly, uh, and and surround ourselves with the information. Here's the the study that I've just basically finished, and I'm working on my solution. This last market we had very volatile in a volatile market as the consumer of the product, let's say the builder, you know what they need? They need longer term guaranteed pricing. They need more security. What happened? 90 day yeah. pricing went to 30 day. They lost it's all like, that. I mean, it went to 11 day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it went the absolute opposite direction. Yeah. So, Oh, you have a problem. Here's my solution. You're more screwed. Yeah. And now it's not all the blame, by the way, on the, um, the material supplier as an industry we need to uh, remember the the prison in the background and actually do the right thing and we need to have solid contracts if i go look i, I want to buy from you for 120 day pricing okay that's a deal like you're not walking away from that yeah and his customer's not walking away so like we need to get rock solid agreements and it's out see the, the crazy thing is it's out there you can get this long-term pricing it's just a matter of getting the agreements. But this is a perfect example of where someone is going to come up with the solution that the industry really needs, which is, you know, good product, the right product, the right time, the right price held inside of a commodity market. That's not easy, but it's possible. But we have to work together on this. We have to awesome. have good contracts. We have to have good information. Um. And we have to think differently. You got to think outside the box. Well, you're we are operating in a very uh, interesting world, and I I can't even imagine the. Uh, I mean, you, you're 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 a relatively young company. Would you say four years, three and a half, something uh, like that? No, three. It's just over three years from the first code being typed in the computer. I mean, what a wild ride! <laughs> yeah, it had, yeah. And if someone would have said, uh, "What do you think? Let's do a startup um, in the middle of a pandemic." Yeah. Or you know, we're gonna have a pandemic. Um, then we're going to have a, the wildest volatility you've ever had. Yep. And, uh, oh, just for icing on the cake, then we're going to throw in inflation and the fastest rate rises you've seen in, you know, 50 right. years. And go. Okay. <laughs> Sign now, me the, up. The, but the ironic thing is, it's those um, outside forces that really pull the covers back on how inefficient and how broken the system is. It does. Without those outside forces, you're like, you know, the car's still working. Don't lift the hood. The car's still working. 
Well, keep doing what you're doing, man. I think that's pretty. Uh, I think it's it's pretty aggressive. To I, I love I love people who are who are you know uh, tr- trying to do something dramatically different. You clearly are, uh, nice. and uh, and it's working. So so, uh, Stacy, what do we have from the audience? Yeah, let me check. I don't see any new questions, but I was just thinking as you were talking. So you talked about uh, the digital marketplace and building information modeling. What are your thoughts on, so you have a huge mechanical room and you have all these, you know, equipment, will will there be um, like ticklers that say, you know, we're coming up on 30 years of this equipment, now you should replace it? Or will there be, if like a system breaks down, do you work with that on its time to purchase? Existing building. Yeah. Existing ones. Uh, you, you're talking about a building that was built using BIM, right? Yes. It. Oh my God, BIM's BIM's the beautiful, the best uh, solution for this. Think about your house today. You look at the wall. Wouldn't you love to know what's behind that wall? Mm-hmm. If if you had a digital print of that, and you can go so far. There's technology today where they will take uh, an image of the job site every day or every few hours. And you can literally see what was behind that wall as it was being built. Yeah. So yeah, the the BIM idea with all the information about the building in one spot, yeah, you can have a tickler. And you know, all of a sudden the light pops up. It's been 10 years since you replaced your water heater. You should consider, you know, checking right. and, it out. And automatically connect you to here's, you know, three different models that you might want to consider. And they're being carried by these four different uh, retailers. And yeah. or this is this is a new system you could put in. It's a tankless water heater and it's gonna, it's gonna do this. There was there was one someone made a comment about hard to imagine CLT and residential light frame construction. Um, I don't disagree with the comment utilizing the CLT we know today. But what if the CLT was a honeycomb CLT or if it was a little bit lighter or like this is where you really need to think outside the box. Do you know why we build with two by fours and two by sixes in the United States? Because we always have. Because that's what they make. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Exactly. Right. If when you pull out your kid's drawer of Legos, what are you going to build something with? The blocks that are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change the blocks. Yeah. So um, I, I think the when I don't want to just say CLT, I'd like to say mass timber more and right. just offsite construction, new concepts of how to build. Um, and I think it's really it's a blend. It's using CLT where it makes sense and then regular, you know, stick frame around the outside. Um, the, the challenge the industry has is that there's probably no one contractor or no one company that knows how to do all of it at one, you know, in one building, Mm -hmm. all the different type of construction methods. Katera was opposed to. I'd love to meet them. (laughs) Katera was an amazing idea. Yeah. And look, Katera was onto something. And by the way, the assets of Katera have been bought by some really bright people that are going to take it to the next level. Yeah. Look, does everyone love their file sharing and, you know, how much music that they don't have to have CDs? They like, you know, you can go on Amazon Music or Spotify. Yeah, again, you know, probably all- 90% of people strongly prefer that to the old yeah. CD days. And right? it all started with Napster. Yeah. And guess what? Napster failed horribly. Yeah. Uh, WeWork. I think WeWork is a genius idea. They just basically failed horribly, but... They are the ones that are going to plow the street for the uh, idea of, you know, shared space. Yeah, I think that's right. I think at the I think at the end of the day, we'll we'll think of what Katera tried to do as a as a as a positive step, maybe you know uh, an overstep, but a positive step. <laughs> right? Yeah, look, yeah. they they definitely brought a new set of a new way to look at the problem. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Um, oh, good. Uh, 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 Stacy, Mike, anything else? Stacy, you seeing anything else you want to surface? Um, I don't see anything, but I don't know if my LinkedIn is freezing because it's all good. Yeah, sorry. Mike, <laughs> anything else on your mind before we um, uh, before we wrap? 
I mean, I'm just kudos to you guys for, for doing this. Um, information is power. And what I really love is the fact that you're putting it out there and, you know, allowing companies like mine to come on here and, and talk about what we're doing. Um, but the, the people who are watching this now live and that are going to watch the replay, those are the people that are going to move this industry forward. So, uh, you know, kudos to you guys. Kudos to the people listening here. Let's uh, let's make construction great again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, thank you so much. We really appreciate you being on again. I think uh, you're, you're doing a hard thing. Uh, you're, you're, you're challenging norms and, uh, and overall, I think, you know, the, the, the trend toward transparency is progress. And, uh, I really look forward to watching you. I'll be, I'll be, uh, for sure, uh, keeping up, keeping my eye on your, on your company and, and looking for the success stories as things come out and, uh, leading change. So, where, uh, and where would people find out more if they wanted to um, learn more about you? Materialsexchange.com. Um, you know, if you look it up, it's here's the word the, this way. Uh, no, there is no E on exchange. It's materials. Just exchange. exchange. Yep. Yeah. And look, yeah. so this is kind of interesting in our logo. The bottom of the X is filled in. And if anyone remembers from their chemistry class, Delta means change. See, look at that. Huh? It's, so it's, the, it's the details, Mike. The hidden uh, <laughs> logo. Well done, sir. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, Stacy, we have a few housekeeping items. Um, Mike, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Uh, Stacy, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about next week. So uh, next week, we have someone coming on from the Maryland Center for Construction, Education, and Innovation, the MCCEI. A lot of letters, uh, but they, uh, it's, so we have um, Jennifer Sproul joining us. Uh, do you know Jennifer? I do. I've worked with Jennifer. She's, you know, fierce in this industry with leading the way in education and uh, volunteered this past year um, out in Baltimore. Uh, we were doing a bunch of stuff with middle school kids to get them interested in the industry and learn about cool. estimating. Cool. Yeah. We need estimators. My Lord, please make them good at yeah. estimating. <laughs> um, uh, good. So, so we have Jennifer joining. What she's going to be uh, coming on to talk about is solving the workforce puzzle. So, from her perspective, on this, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, workforce development starting at the very youngest ages, at just as you know, Stacy was talking about creating interest uh, in, in the youth and things along those lines. She's going to talk about what the uh, MCC uh, EI is doing. She's going to talk about what uh, employers are doing, and uh, hopefully what each of us can do to contribute to the industry. So I'll be look, uh, looking forward to that conversation. Um, Stacy, do you have our, our marketing minute, our marketing tip for the week? I do. It's super simple and a change since our conversation today. But when you're thinking about uh, your still toe marketing tip of the week, Mike was just talking about how he left the lumber industry and went to the finance industry and then came back. I think we have to use that um, in a lot of different ways, but with our marketing too. So stop looking at your competition on what to do, but look outside the industry, especially since other industries are so advanced and see what they're doing marketing wise and bring that information back to your company and use those ideas. I love it. I think it's a great idea. Get outside the, get outside the bubble a little bit and yes. instead of looking at what other construction companies are doing. Maybe take a look at what another business, business to business uh, enterprise is doing or yeah, right. Take a look at finance, take a look at accounting, take a look at tech. Um, yeah, yeah I think that's great advice. Um, hard to translate some of those lessons back into your world, but if you can figure out how to do it, you'll be doing something nobody else is doing. Correct. Thanks, Steel. <laughs> that's strong. All right, good. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. I, I, I have nothing else. Uh, Stacy, anything else on your end? That's all. I'll I've got a, a new little wrap up jingle. I look forward <laughs> to pressing play on. Oh, no. We'll see you next week. Audience, we'll see yeah. you next week. Thanks so much for checking in uh, and joining us for the huddle. See ya.